So in this video we're going to be learning how to create our own version of the really popular game Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird was a game that came out a few years ago and it was really popular and the concept is you tap the screen to keep the bird from hitting pillars at the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen. And we're going to learn how to recreate that same concept in JavaScript. So to do this we're going to be using a JavaScript library called p5.js. So all we have to do is we download that library, we download p5.js complete and when you download that you're going to get a file like this. So the only file we actually need is this file called p5.js. We're also going to download a library called p5.collide2d. That's going to make collision detection a lot easier for when we create our game. So here is what our game looks like. So you can see in the game we play as this sphere. So you can see we play as this sphere and if I tap the spacebar you can see it makes the ball jump. And the aim of the game is to make sure that we don't hit any of these black bars. Because if we hit a black bar the whole game stops. And you can see if you hit the black bar the game stops and the game is procedurally generated so these bars are all random heights and they're all generated as you play the game. So let's learn how to create that. So all of the work we're going to do is going to be done in JavaScript. So the index page we just have to include the p5.js JavaScript library. We have to include the p5.collide2d add-on which makes collision detection easier. And then we have a file called pipe, another file called bird and another file called word. So pipe is where we have the code for the black bars that come from the top and bottom of the screen. Bird is what we're calling the player, which is this circle. And world is the JavaScript file that puts everything together. So if we start with world, p5.js requires two functions. It has a draw function and a setup function. Then what we do is we create a canvas, which allows us to draw objects onto it, which is how we draw these bars and the circle. It's all inside a HTML5 canvas. So all I did was set the canvas width and height to the width and height of the window and I created a bird object. A bird object is just an instance of our bird class in our bird file. So then what I did was I set the background color to white and for the next part we have this frame count variable. I didn't create that variable, it's built into p5.js which is why we can use it without declaring it. And what we're doing here is saying every 150 frames we're going to create a new pipe and our pipes are all stored in an array called pipes. Then what we do is we loop through every pipe and we show it on the screen. So this draw method runs every single frame and the update method is what we use to move the pipes to the left. So as you, if you remember when we play the game, the pipes start on the right hand side of the screen and they're continually getting closer to the left hand side. So the way that works is in the update file we just have a parameter called this.x minus equals one. So that just means we update the x position of each pipe every frame by moving it one pixel to the left. And next what we do is we check if the bird is touching the pipe. So we loop through the entire pipes array every frame and for every iteration we check if the bird has touched the pipe. If it has we run this special function called no loop which is another built in function into p5.js which just stops the game and we console.log game over. Underneath that we are just running the show function to make sure our bird shows up on the screen and the update method is how we add physics to our bird. So if I refresh you can see if we don't actually press the space bar to jump the bird falls to the bottom of the screen and we have to keep it up by pressing the space bar. So the update method is how we add gravity to the bird and finally we have this special key pressed function which is another built in function into p5.js and that allows us to use the special key variable to say if the key pressed is a space bar then we're going to run the special fly method which is how we make the bird jump. So if we go to the bird class now, the bird is just a class with a constructor that sets the width and height of the bird, the initial x and y position and the width variable and the height variable are built in which is why we didn't need to declare them. We set the bird's gravity, jump and velocity. So in the show method we run another built in p5.js method called fill. So the fill method fills all the objects that come after it. So we set the fill color to black and then the next object that comes after it is an ellipse which is the circle that we use to represent the bird. So all we're doing is we're setting the position of the bird and we're setting the width and height of the bird. So these two lines are how we implement gravity for the bird and this line just means that if the bird hits the bottom of the screen it doesn't fall off the screen because if I comment that out and I refresh you can see the bird fell off the edge of the screen and we do the same thing for the top of the screen as well. Our fly method is how we jump so all we do is we decrease the velocity which lifts the bird up because a positive velocity going down will force the bird to the bottom of the window and finally we just have this touches method which takes a pipe as a parameter and this is where we use that collide library. So we run the function collide rect circle which 
checks if a rectangle has collided with a circle and in our case we're checking if the pipe which is a rectangle has, co has collided with the bird which is a circle and if it does we return true otherwise we return false and finally we just have to look at our pipe object so the pipe object is really simple we just have a constructor which sets the width and the height of the pipe and it sets the gap in between the pipes so you can see down here in the show method we're creating two rectangles one is for the top and one is for the bottom. So we're drawing the bottom rectangle first and then we're drawing the top rectangle. And we use this gap variable to make sure that there's a gap between them because if there isn't, the two pipes will touch each other and we'll not be able to fly through them. So the gap variable is just set using this random function which chooses a number between 50 and 300. And it's another built-in function in p5.js. And that's really all there is to our game. So that's all there is to it when we create a game using p5.js. There's only about 120 lines of code in this whole game. And what I'll do is I'll put it on the High Code GitHub page and I'll include a link to it in the description. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favor, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Also, don't forget to sign up to the highcode.org website. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.